I feel like I still, all of this is sometimes surreal. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I, explaining this to people is a wild ride. Before Benny, we had had three miscarriages and then we became pregnant with Benny. We were very cautious. Once the pregnancy progressed, it was clear that it was, it was gonna stick, it was a good one. You know, I mean, it was just, uh, it was a great time. Being first time parents, you're never really sure exactly what to expect, but we knew people also having babies and it just didn't seem that Benny's development was lining up with their development. He was not walking safely. He wasn't able to feed himself. He really wasn't hitting any of those milestones. And then I guess that's when the seizures really began to take over our lives. I remember getting that call that said everything came back fine. So while everybody was relieved that there was nothing on those tests, we knew that we still had a battle and we just didn't know how to fix it. Constantly trying to search for a diagnosis is expensive and time consuming and frustrating. We tried everything and um, there's nobody you can turn to to talk to about it because you don't have anything to talk about. It feels hopeless. We sought out another opinion and that's what brought us to Lurie Children's. Lori Children's has one of the largest, most robust teams in the Midwest. What I can say we felt the first time we went to Lori Children's was an acceptance. We had people that we could depend on. A lot of families experience what is called the diagnostic odyssey. Even though we've made a great deal of advancements, unfortunately, it's something that we see too often in genetics. It can be so difficult to go around with this unanswered question of why. We had done all the genetic testing we could at the time. There just wasn't a need to continue to chase it, so we just sort of tabled that and um, treated what we could treat. It was, to be honest, nice to have something to take our minds off of what was going on. She was talking, she was babbling, she was imitating. It was bittersweet to see that, but it, it was the confirmation we needed that we needed to keep investigating what was going on with Benny. Around her nine or 10 month well-being check, we sort of started to question her missing milestones. She wasn't supporting herself and sitting up and doing some of those things that we then had a, a rush of memories back to Ben that it looked very similar to, to what had happened when, when he was a baby. So we talked to our pediatrician and he immediately said, you gotta go back to genetics. You gotta get somebody to look at this. In the last few years. Genetics has really advanced a great deal. The technology has improved significantly. It still gives me goosebumps. Catherine called and said, we think we found something. And she wanted us to come in as quickly as possible. They do not make creatine and you need creatine for your brain and for your muscles, which explains why Benny was not able to walk or crawl well, and he was had terrible balance, and his brain was malfunctioning at the time. So this explained all of it, and Celia was about to go down that same road. We went from no diagnosis and no outlook to now a diagnosis, a treatment regimen, so much information around it, and then, you know, a, a a prognosis. It just felt like, okay, let's go, let's do this. Now, now starts a completely new life for us. So we began treatment in December. Celia was crawling two weeks later. Celia caught up very quickly by kindergarten. I remember Benny having a seizure August of 2009, mm -hmm. and that's the last one I can remember, and it was nothing short of a miracle. One of my favorite things to do with Ben is probably watch game shows with him because he gets really excited. We're a really great test case for what this treatment can do for you, right? We've got one that just missed the opportunity to be treated at a time that would, that would solve his problems. We've got another one who we got just in time. 
early diagnosis and treatment is really the critical aspect for treatment of this condition. Our latest push was to get it on the newborn screening list. For years, we were speaking to these newborn screening committees and we were turned down once. And in January of this year, it was finally approved. Kids like Benny won't exist. You know, you're not gonna find a kid who was undiagnosed for five years. I see other families going through this right now, being undiagnosed. And it's really difficult for me to watch that happen. There's a lot more research and advancements still need to happen. I'd like to see our program of research and development grow significantly so we can be a major player and part of those new treatments coming up. Lurie Children's absolutely changed the trajectory of both of their lives.